So, guys, get excited for the next episode of the Investor Army podcast. We have a special guest on here today and a special topic. We're talking about mobile home investing. This is something I personally enjoy because I've done very well in the few that we've done. I'd like to do more. Our guest today is an expert doing this since 1982. He was a top sales manager at a mobile home dealership. He's owned a mobile home park. He's done a lot of mobile home deals. And right now he makes his money, big money, investing in double wide mobile homes on dirt. So let me introduce my guest guest today, Glenn Stromberg. Hey, Connor, how are you doing today? How are you doing, Glenn? Now, guys, I'm doing doing great. Glad to be with you. Yeah, before we get started, Glenn, I just want to talk about your book right here. So Glenn partnered with Dr. David Phelps. A lot of y'all know him. And they wrote a book called Private Lender Secrets Revealed. Now, if you're on the Investor Army Podcast YouTube channel, you can see it. If not, we'll put the link on there, guys. And I read this book last week, and I was pretty impressed with it. I thought it was a great book. It talked a lot about market cycles and joint ventureships. And a lot of the side of the real estate business that you don't hear a lot about, you know, there's a lot of stuff on lead generation and and running your business. But this is the type of book that gives you the kind of the the the, the nuts and bolts of the business and kind of what you need to know. So go ahead and check that out. Now, Glenn, um, you're here in Dallas, Fort Worth market, right? And you've been doing mobile homes for you know a long time. So if you're still doing it, you obviously know what you're doing and you're an expert at this. And I want you to introduce yourself and kind of let people know how you got into the business and, and kind of give them a little bit about your background. You know, I, honestly, it's funny how I got in the business. I answered that out of the paper. And, uh, you know, it was a guy that said, you know, I could sell mobile homes. I could make a lot of money and, and uh, said I could make a six-figure income, and I was able to. That was back in 1982, which that's when $100,000 was really a lot of money back then, too. So yeah. it was good. So um, then, then just to give a brief history, uh, I worked at a, at a mobile home dealership for two years as a sales manager. Uh uh, then a partner and I, we opened up, we started our own business. And at one time we had 13 retail sales centers that we, uh, you know, same as a car dealership where people would come look at the mobile homes, or deliver them to the land or the park. So I had 13 of those. Um, then I had, I had, I had sold out to my partner about seven years later, um, did some real estate investing on my own for a while. And then I had a Clayton home franchise, which that's the company Warren Buffett bought. I had, a, I had a Clayton home franchise for 15 years. Um, like I said, I developed, uh, developed a mobile home subdivision, several mobile home subdivisions, owned a mobile home park. And, uh, then it was around 19 or 2006 was when I saw a trend coming to where, uh, there were tons of FHA foreclosures, double wides on, on land that were available. And, uh, I saw the trend happening and that's when I started doing my current business model, which is buying double wides on land. And then, uh, you know, we have various exit strategies for them, but, but that's primarily what I do here today. And, um, people ask me, well, why do you, why do you do mobile homes? And I always like to say, I think it's the best kept secret in real estate investing. I really believe that it's less, it's, it's, it's less capital, less capital to buy them. And it, it, it'll surprise you what the cash flow is on a lot of times it's, it's double and triple the cash flow you're going to get on a, on a, on a brick house. So that that's why I do what I do. <laughs> I mean, mobile homes are absolutely awesome guys. If you haven't done a mobile home deal and you're starting out in the business and some of y'all don't have a lot of capital, this is kind of how I started. So I, I went out into some secondary and tertiary markets outside DFW because it's the only way I could find deals. And I went out, you know, I found these deals off Craigslist and I was buying them for five, ten thousand $10,000. And, and I didn't really know what I was doing and realized I couldn't quickly retail them. And so I stumbled into owner financing, um, which I'm sure we'll talk about here in a second as far as different exit strategies. But that's kind of how I stumbled my way in, in, into the business. And there are huge returns on these uh, different mobile home parks, or you can buy them uh, on land or in a park and you can make money on either, either different type of strategy. But we're gonna touch on a lot of different aspects of mobile home business. And uh, $100,000, you know, back then, even now is a lot of money. So guys, maybe go figure out how to get in the mobile home business and um, start figuring out how to make some money because right now the mobile homes, they are, like he said, an unkept secret. And he's going to tell you why he makes so much money is because you can finance these things for quite a bit more than what you have in them and pull your money out and basically keep long-term notes. Is, is that kind of what you're doing with a lot of these that you're buying? Well, I, I do varying exit strategies. You know, we're I'm part of, uh, as you know, I'm part of the Freedom Founders Mastermind Group, David Phelps Group, right? And what we do is we we structure win-win joint ventures. And to make a long story short, it's a group of dentists that they have the capital, we have the real estate expertise, so we joint venture and and we like I say we we create we create lucrative real estate joint ventures for private investors. That's what we do. Okay, and but as far as your exit strategy, are y'all keeping them long term for rentals? Or are you? Yeah, here's, here's what we're doing. But primarily right now, I have I have two 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 exit strategies. Number one is 
I bring I bring the I bring the investor in. He's just the bank. He's the lender on the property. Okay, and we rent them out. I have a full time property management department. Um, we have nine people in our company, and and uh, so under we call it option one. We buy the mobile home. We fix it up. The, the, the investor will fund the, the acquisition cost plus the rehab. We get the positive cash flow. They got mailbox money and uh, we make them totally passive. We tell them they only have two jobs to wire the money to the title company when we close. And number two is go to the mailbox and get their check every month and put it in the bank. Outside of that, we do everything else for them. Option number two is the turnkey model where what we'll do is we do everything exactly the same. We buy it, fix it up, find the tenant for them, property manage it for them. By the way, we do charge the standard 10% property management fee. Uh, that's what we charge. And then we'll, we'll, we'll mark the, we normally will mark the home up $15,000. That's what we make for, for, for our part. And then we sell, we sell it to the investor, then we manage it for them. So those are the two, those are the two primary exit strategies that I do. Now I've done a lot of seller, seller carry in the past. The reason I'm not doing it right now is the Dallas Fort Worth market is so hot to where we're, we're seeing tremendous appreciation, rent increases, and I really don't want to lock myself in right now on a note. I just don't want to do it. So <laughs> that, that's my strategy. So <laughs> he, hit, he hit me with a curveball, guys, there, because pretty much everyone we've ever talked to that's doing mobile homes is doing owner financing. So that's interesting that, you know, and you're probably the most advanced investor we've had on the show as far as doing mobile homes. So he's actually keeping these for rental properties. Um, he's doing th uh, through a joint venture t uh, type of transaction. But guys, he, he mentioned Freedom Founders. So you want to talk about that, that a little bit with what David Phelps and y'all are doing there? Um, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, David Phelps had had kind of a he just he was a he was a dentist. And, and here's what I've learned. A lot of dentists, they get tired of what they're doing after a while. They get carpal tunnel. They, they get bored with it, everything else. And But David was smart. He started doing real estate back in the early 80s, too. He started doing it on the side and so forth. And David basically replaced his income, his his, his dental income, with, with passive real estate income. Okay, so he had a vision that he calls his group Freedom Founders. He wants to free the dentist from the chair because he knows how miserable he was. And not all. I mean, some dentists still love what they do. Right. It's about 50 50. The other ones don't. So he helps them create a plan with the joint ventures that we do where they can slowly but surely replace their passive income. And that started about five years ago. There were five of us at a table. And I think the last event, there was about 150 people there. And it's been cool to watch because. We've already had three or four people, uh, you know, replace their. They, they they say they throw their keys in the bushes. You know, they they can replace their income and uh, and uh, matter of fact, just just had one of the guys sell his. He had three practices. I think he sold it for two point nine million dollars. I, I you know I won't give out names, but uh, so it's been cool to watch to where these guys they feel the freedom to get out of what they're doing and they obviously everybody loves passive income. So it's, it's, it's truly a win-win situation and it's been neat to watch David and his dream come true on that. So. Yeah. David's a high level entrepreneur and those events are great. I went to one, I guess, probably not the last one, but the one before, and I was really impressed with what, right. what was going on there. And um, there's a lot of opportunity. Are y'all limiting that to just dentists or, or, or uh, y'all opening up to all doctors or, um, yeah, there's, we, we've got, we've got some vets in there. I believe there's a doctor or two in there. So no, it's just, he, he just wants to bring the right people in the group. So I think if he's got, you know, it's, it's just, there's, there's actually a little qualifying deal. Like I said, he wants to make sure that it's people that really do want to change their lives, have the vision and, and so forth. But yeah, it's, it's not just dentists. There's some other, there's some other, uh, you know, other types of professions in there also. Yeah, so it's a great event, and Glenn's in there running the expert side of things as far as the the connecting the money to, to these types of deals, and he's providing a lot of these deals to them uh, for the mobile home. So how do you go about sourcing these deals, and is your strategy to find them in parks or on land, or what is your main focus in, as far as, uh, I know you like to buy them on large acreage, and, and I think that's what deters a lot of people is they don't know how to evaluate those types of properties. Right. And, and here's what both can be lucrative. You know, manufactured homes, there's 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 two ways you can get them. One's a personal property, just like a car. That's usually in mobile home parks, the, the their, their personal property. You can make money on those, too. OK, but everything that my primary business model, what we do right now is it when we we, we go, we, every, all the all the homes are on are on land and we buy single wives, too. We're buying single wives right now, too, because the rental market's so hot. But I, I'd say 95 percent of our stuff is double wides. But um, the typical the typical property we buy is it, it's on one acre. 
Okay. It's on one acre. And, um, you know, the nice thing about the manufactured homes that people, you know, they probably don't think of they're, they're in all the surrounding counties of the Dallas Fort Worth area, right? In, in, in Tarrant County and Dallas County, there's, there's no land for mobile homes there. So it's all, it's all parks. But the, the good thing is there, there's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of families, a lot of mothers prefer to have an acre track of land so their kids can play there. Plus most of them are, are in better school districts than the Dallas Fort Worth school districts too. So that's a big plus too. So um, we, we virtually have zero, zero vacancies. I mean, we, we usually have people lined up for our houses. We really do. So. I mean, like when they kind of, uh, if they have to commute to the city, I mean, really, it doesn't take that long because it's not till you get in the city where the traffic is. So they can basically get into Dallas pretty quickly. Absolutely. Most of what we buy is probably within 30 miles of Dallas, downtown Dallas and downtown Fort Worth. Yeah, that's that's primarily where they are. OK, now when it comes to taking title to these properties, you so this is where it gets confusing. So, you know, let's talk about do you need a statement of ownership and location if the properties um attached to like what is what's the determination of whether the property is real property versus personal property and when it's attached to prop, uh, ground i guess once the wheels have been taken off it's been cinched down yeah explain that for everybody because this is yeah, where i get a lot good. of confusion this was back and, and I'm, I'm 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 guessing on the year but back around 1999 or 2000 everything was personal property back then the state of texas changed it to where they, they put some parameters where you had to make it real property okay now the good thing about that was was the manufactured homes can be financed FHA. You've got to put them on an FHA foundation, which is concrete runners where the straps are tied into the concrete. And back in the early 2000s, all the manufactured home dealers were doing those because honestly FHA was, it was fog the mirror underwriting. If they, had, if they could fog a mirror, they got approved. And so that's why there's, I think they, I, I think the last number I heard there's 50,000, you know, mobile homes on land in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Uh, now you you can check TDHCA has a website. It'll tell you, you, you get the label number off the back of the house. It'll tell you if it's a personal property or if it's real property. 90% of what I buy is real property. And then sometimes they just haven't converted it yet. And then when I close at the title company, I'll make it real property too. It's a simple with the ownership and location form that you talked about. It's very simple to do. Yeah, and that website is talking about the Texas Housing Community Affairs. Uh, so, I mean, I personally ran into this when I started my business. I basically, you know, I bought a property, I thought, from an, uh, a young lady who was estranged with her father. And she sold me the property, and I closed a title company. I was so brand new in the business. I didn't know what I was doing, so I closed on just the land. And I didn't find out later that she still had a note with, with her father for the ownership of the property. Right. And I didn't get the statement of ownership and location. And I had to end up settling with, with the father to avoid going into loss because I, I basically own the land. So he couldn't come on property for trespassing. But technically, from what I understood, he owned that. And right. our, our argument was, no, this is improved value to the land because it was on the uh, county records as improved value. But, um, you know, I didn't have the I didn't want to fight it at the time. I just went ahead and settled with him. It wasn't that much. Anyways, it was only like seven grand. But um, that's important, guys, to know what he's just talking about, personal versus real property. And so. When you go close on these, you do it all at a title company or you go through and they close the actual prop or the actual mobile home itself and the land as one at the title company or you have to close, close they close as one at the title company. And I always get a title commitment on it to guarantee to guarantee good title. Okay. Yeah, that's very important. Um right. so what are kind of the price points y'all are looking at right now? Um, because I know you can get a wide range. You have, you know, basically the ones that people are trying to give you for free. All the way up to really, really nice properties now. I mean, you see these mobile homes on land, the double wides. I mean, they're nice granite, you know, hardwood floors. They're as nice as a nice house. Um, right. So what? where is the the money-making point? I mean, I'm sure you can make money on all of them, but what's the sweet spot that you're going for? Well, and, and like, like I said, there's, there, there's, there's a sweet spot with the personal property homes that, you know, yeah, when I had my dealerships, I would have people, you know, call me and come to, come to the sales, say, if you'll pick up my home, I'll give it to you. So if you got a place to take it, you can make money on that, right? Because new house dealers don't want to mess with the trade-in. They don't, they don't make money on that. They make money on the new houses. But, um, you know, as you know, the Dallas-Fort Worth area now is a crazy seller's market, okay? So just to give you the history of it, probably back in, in you know, in 2011 and 12, kind of when I started with Freedom Founders, right? 
I was probably able to buy the homes on land for anywhere from twenty five to thirty five to forty thousand dollars. Well, not and, and what that's the all in price. Okay, when I say all in price, that's acquisition plus rehab. Okay, yeah. uh, now those properties are going for seventy five thousand. Or probably more like seventy five thousand, but the good the good news is the prices of the homes have gone way up, and so have the price so have the rent values too. So everything's going up accordingly. There's there's manufactured homes now that are selling for one hundred thirty hundred forty thousand dollars, bigger ones that are on land. So now why? Because the sticks and brick houses are selling for two to two fifty. So usually the the, the manufactured home industry moves. It's always going to be below. The sticks and bricks houses, but it, it's it's going to go up and down with them. So, what would you what would your advice be to a new investor who comes to you and says, "Well, I heard mobile homes depreciate, so they're not a good investment," which is what I hear commonly out there, and so people will try to run from them. But um, I mean, obviously, with the low price point properties, right. they're so low, it doesn't even matter if they depreciate. But what about well, the, the mid range to upper range properties? What do you yeah. kind of see? Uh, and I, if someone's if someone asked me that question, if it's a personal property in a mobile home park, I would totally agree with them. It's going to de- it's going to depreciate. No ifs, ands, or buts, or maybes. Okay, the land is what makes it real estate, and and you know we just did valuations. We've got roughly 100 properties now. We just did valuations on our properties. Some of them have doubled since 2011, 2012, doing comps in the area. So <laughs> so I would I would say that no, those are not depreciating. They're appreciating pretty well. So, so I just put that myth to rest, guys. Not only do they not depreciate, if they're a good property in a good area on a good piece of land, they go up, at least right now in this market. Um, what? Okay, so here's what I see a lot, right? So a lot of people are on classified sites. you got all these people that have mobile homes stuck inside a park, and they're trying to get rid of it. They're carrying that, that lot rent, and they literally can't get rid of it because they can't afford to move it. And so they're literally trying to give it away. They give it away free or maybe for $1,000, $2,000. What would your advice be to a new investor who thinks it's a good idea at the time to go buy some random piece of land outside and then move that trailer home to it and set it up? Because I think a lot of them way underestimate the cost to do this when they have to run electric to it, put a septic in. And, and do, you, do you ever do this or, or is it is this a no. strategy that's worth focusing on? There was a day we could. You can't right now. It's too expensive to move. Them. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really too expensive. Now, once again, if if. if if somebody had a, raw, a piece of land or a little mobile home park or a place to put some homes, it could be a gold mine because you can get the homes for nothing, bring them out there. Then, you, then of course, you can afford to rehab them. And I used to do that. I used to do some of that, too. But today, it's just very hard. Um, it, the, the, the counties have gotten a lot tougher as far as the, the, the requirements. And, and yeah, to, to, make a, to make a lot mobile ready – you know, a septic tank's probably seven seven grand now for a septic tank. Run the water, the electric, everything, the driveway. You know, you're probably talking, you know, like the an acre of land in Johnson Parker County, which are where I've got my most the most houses in. You know, the just the acre mobile ready is going for twenty five to thirty thousand dollars right now. So that's that's what it goes for. Yeah. So guys, be careful with that because I know a lot of y'all look at the low price point up front. You're like, how can I not make money on this? But also, a lot of people, I think get into a situation where they come across lots in the city and they come into these neighborhoods like in Denison and some of these other areas, you have mixed neighborhoods where they have mobile homes and houses in there, but they don't understand that those mobile homes were grandfathered in. And if they try to move in a mobile home into that, into that land, you know, they can get, you know, basically it's not going to work out. And so I think that you, you got you got to do your, your research on the front end to make sure you, you know, you're not gonna have trouble with the cities for sure. So. Okay. Most of your properties around lakes or is there certain types of, Features where you're trying to uh, basically compile these properties and keep them all in one area, centrally located to. No, no, no. We, we're, we're, if it's, you know, I guess our buying criteria, if I had to sum it up, we want to get a, a decent, a decent house floor plan. Okay. That's a good thing about manufactured homes. Most of them are good floor plans. They were designed by, you know, designed by engineers to make good, but every now and then you'll see a bad floor plan. The other thing where you got to be careful is, you know, through the years, you know, mobile homes are like cars. There's there's a very cheap model. There's a mid range, a high end. For for my model, I've got to be very careful. You don't want to buy the real cheap ones that aren't going to hold up. Some of them were kind of cheap. Um, um, 
my buying criteria is 1990 and above. That was kind of the year they, especially the flooring they changed. Instead of instead of the particle board floors they used to use, they put an OSB in plywood, and so they hold up a lot better from 1990 and later models. So that's an over, you know, just a good house in a good area. You know, I never want to buy in a war zone. I never want to, you know, do anything like that. And the rest of it's just if the numbers work, we buy it. If the numbers don't work, we don't. Now, what's the typical lifespan of a, one of the newer types of properties? So 1990 newer, what, what can you kind of expect? And then in relation to a single family house, as far as your long term cost in maintaining the property? Okay, I'll, I'll put it this way. My dad was a mason contractor and a builder in Chicago. OK, he came to look at he came to look at about 10 or 15 of my properties. Uh, we, he was in visiting. We went and drove around and he went, whoa, these are built better than a lot of track homes in Chicago. And the funny thing is, is that is that I know they are. OK, I mean, I, I look at some of the houses that, that some of my friends buy that are 1930s, 1940s and all the stuff they go through. And I'm like, whoa, man, I'm glad I'm not doing that. I mean, it, it's uh, the manufactured homes that it, they'll, they'll last forever. They'll take, you know, if you take care of them, same thing, you got to fix them up. You got to put new carpet, new paint. Yes. You're going to have to make repairs from time to time, but they, they, they really, the manufactured housing industry really picked up their game in the early nineties. And there's, there's some now that sell for three and $400,000. You would never know you're in a manufactured home. I mean, it's, it's, they, they you, you, you can get any amenity in a manufactured home. You could probably, you can get in a, in a stick and brick house. Yeah. I mean, they're getting nice. I mean, guys kind of look at like this. You got, Say you're trying to, to build your portfolio or you have some money in your retirement account and you want to buy, you got, say, $25,000, $30,000. Do you really want to buy a, a 1930s frame house sitting on pier and beam foundation that's just, you know, basically seeing its best days? Or do you want to take that money and buy a 1995 uh, mobile home that's basically going to get equal to or probably even more in rent than some of these areas? So, like, what is, um, so kind of what's, if you're at like a forty to $50,000 price point, what do these typically rent for as far as? So we can well, kind of compare yeah, it to a single family house. Yeah. And, and like I say, 40 to 50,000 now, they're hard to find them at that price. Okay. So they, they really are. It's just, they've gone up, but, but say, let's say, uh, like I said, probably our typical is $75,000. Okay. We're renting that. We're now we fix them up really nice. Our, our business model is we fix them up like so nice to where they can't have an excuse not to want to rent it. Okay. I mean, we really fix them up good. So our typical rent is probably 11 to $1,200 a month now. That's really good. That's our typical rent for, for 75,000 in the house. So yeah, the numbers work really well. Yeah. That's really, really good. Um, are you ever just flipping these traditional, just buy, fix and flip? Like, oh, I've, I've, you know, back, back in, it's kind of a funny story because back in 2000 and 2006 and 2007, that's all I was doing. I was able to fix and flip them, make 20 to $40,000 a house was doing two to two to $3,000 or two to three a month. And life was good. Then 2008 hit and man, it was over just like that. That's where I had to reinvent myself and learn, learn about the rental business. And so that was the best thing that ever happened to me though, because now the passive income on the first of the month, my month's made all the time. So I like that. But uh, but there will be another time to where, yes, I'll fix and flip again when the when the when when the market when there's another reset, which I, I believe there's one coming. I really do. Uh, prices will come down again. And and at that time, probably be a better time to flip than now. So even so, a lot of people on here have different strategies right now. Some are looking for the cash flow. Some are looking to just get out of debt and make some money. So sure, if, sure. They, if they are flipping these houses right now, what is it on their backside, the exit strategy? Are there a lot of banks willing to, to, to write these loans? And is, how hard is it to qualify to get a bank loan um, or actually get a bank to put up that money on a property as compared to a single family house? Is it about the same or is it tougher? Or? It, 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 if, if for, for conventional, it's way tougher. Okay. There's very few, there's very few conventional lenders that will do manufactured homes. If it qualifies for FHA financing, it's the same, it's the same guidelines for as a, as a sticks and brick house for FHA. So, you know, if it's FHA compliant, there's great financing if it's conventional. Um, but you know, I, I want to say this, I haven't used a bank in 10, 10 over 10 years. Okay. I, I don't use banks. I use private money. It, it, it's, it's, to me, it's a way better way to do it. Um, you can take down deals faster. You, you and just it, you've got you got so much more flexibility. Where banks they put you through the ringer. Then once you have ten loans, you got to go through a whole another set of criteria. And the other thing too is in a down market when when things are going wrong, I've known people I've known people in the business that banks call the loans on them. And so I I don't. 
I, you know, like I say, I'm, I'm leery about banks. That's just my personal personal way to look at it. Okay, so <laughs> that, that's why you and David Phelps get along so good because y'all are both kind of in that same thought process. Now, guys, if you're if you're coming across these deals and you're in DFW, I mean, I don't know. You can tell them in a second if you're buying outside of the Metroplex in other states, but I know I think you're going into North Carolina um, here oh, yeah. soon. But guys, if you stumble across one of these deals, because everybody listening to this can get lucky and come across a random deal just by you know chance or word of mouth. Contact Glenn because he, he's willing to possibly partner with you or, or some t- somehow arrange to get that deal done. And you need an expert in your corner because this is something that, you know, you don't just kind of want to jump into, ran, you know, because you watched a quick YouTube video. You need to have someone that can kind of hold your hand through the deal. And so we're going to give his contact information at the end. And so if you do come across a deal, he's, he's probably the best person I know of right now in DFW to go to. Yeah. And, and Connor, I appreciate you saying that. And, and yeah, I, I would be, you know, we, you know, there's a lot of people in real estate investment clubs that they get leads on mobile homes and they call them throwaway leads. So we, we you know, we, we pay them a bird, you know, we'll pay them a bird dog fee. We will pay a thousand dollars for any lead that we convert. Okay. We'll do that. And then uh, I would also with, with, you know, with the right person and so forth, I'd entertain doing a joint venture too. So, but uh, yeah, if anybody, if anybody does find a deal, they, you know, feel free to call me and we'll see if we can put it together. So. Yeah, because I, I mean, I think I think you're a great resource for a lot of the investors here in DFW because most people that come across mobile homes, their entire analysis of the deal on whether or not they want to move forward is if it's so cheap, I can't lose on it. I'm going to move forward with it. Right. So that once you get up in the price points you're talking about, it's a little risky because if you don't know if this is going to be worth four, uh, 60,000 or 80,000 or 110,000, you can make a big mistake. And so how are you kind of analyzing these deals and, and are you backing into it? looking at rental numbers or are you actually looking at on a comp based system but both both and now what, what we do is and obviously you know i've been in this market for so long i i, I just know it okay but we we do run comps for both the sale for, for what the value of the home is plus rental comps we we run those the, the um the, the 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 woman that runs my property management department's a licensed real estate agent okay so she, she'll be checking those out and so forth and um but but what you know, our buying criteria is this. We want to buy it when we buy the home. So just to use a simple example, the $75,000, right? That house has to be worth a hundred, the after repair value for us to buy it. Okay. So we want, we want 25% or, or, or more equity in the property. And then we run the rental numbers too. And we have a formula for that, that we, you know, we, we, we normally want to make minimum 350. Most of the time is over 400 a month cash flow after all bills paid and everything. So yeah, that's pretty good. Now, as far as your property management company goes, is this something you're doing internally only within your own business, or are you helping other investors around the? Oh no, we, we we help other investors too. Yeah, we'll we'll take we we you know we, all our turnkey investors are out you know technically outside investors, and yes, we'll we'll manage other be other other people's properties too, and we will manage brick houses too. We'll we'll manage those too. So. So, are you specifically providing your turnkey properties to the uh, Freedom Founders Network, or are you doing this? To anybody, so like, say someone's coming right, right property, now, just the Freedom Founders Network. We we I can't keep up with the demand there, honestly. So yeah, that's just you know. Hopefully, there's a day. And you mentioned North Carolina. That's that's why we're we're expanding to North Carolina. And the reason we are is because North and South Carolina are, are is the highest per capita of mobile homes families that live in a mobile home in the country. It's almost one out of five. Wow. It's eighteen like eighteen percent of families live in a manufactured home in North and South Carolina. So there's a lot more opportunities there. The prices are better. The rents are a little bit lower, but the numbers work out very, very much the same. And so we think we can increase our deal flow quite a bit, you know, moving into North Carolina. So the guy, you heard him. If you're in DFW or North Carolina, Glenn needs deals. He needs more deal flow. That's that's right. South Carolina too. (laughs) We're we're, we're going to, we're doing, we're going to do South Carolina too. So because rarely do you hear someone say, my problem is I have too much money, but that's his problem right now. He needs more deal flow. And, and guys, he, he's someone to reach out to if you come across one. Now, um, let's see. So you're going to be here at Quest IRA, right, here coming soon on the 26th of July? Yeah, 26th of July, yes. They're having like a casino night, and I'm going to be one of the – uh, yeah, I, I think it's instead of normally I speak at the Quest IRA events, but this one, I think what they're going to do is they're going to have me sit at one of the tables and kind of go through my stuff at the tables. And so, yeah, I'll be there on the 26th. So, yeah. So, guys, go on down there and, and check it out and meet them and, and kind of get a chance to have a face to face introduction, because I know you're going to stumble across mobile homes. I come across them all the time. In fact, I got two right now that I want to run by them a little bit later. Right. Um, now. This is something tough for people to get into, right? Because there's not a lot of information out there. 
Do you have some type of training program that I think you help new investors kind of? I, I do. I do. I have, I have a coaching program where we teach them our business model, and and the 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 nice part about it is we plug them into our system and our contractors and everything else. Okay. So with the coaching program, cause once again, we're trying to create more deal flow. We, we, we basically just show them our model. We look over their shoulders, make, make sure the numbers work. You know, they use our same con the same contractors. We have, you know, we have service people on our payroll too, but, uh, but um, they can just plug, plug into it and, and learn the business and, Plus, the, the, the real nice thing about the coaching program is, is that we can provide we can provide the money for them, too. We don't have to send them out to look. We don't have to send them out to banks and look for money. So yeah, that, that's a big plus. That's a big plus. That's a, that's a huge plus. Now, for, for the program, is, is this something just locally? or Because there's a, a lot of people around the country listening to this podcast. Is it going to be something that they can join from around the country? Or is it localized to Carolinas? And, and Here, here's what I'd say. Okay. And we also teach how to do personal property homes too. Okay. In parks and, and that type of thing, but that's not our primary focus. There's parts of the country that there are no mobile homes. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's, it's, it's, it, it's, it's Southern States primarily that have the homes on the land where my model applies. There are some places up North, but, uh, but right now really we're only doing it in the Dallas Fort Worth area and we're going to do it in North Carolina as we're, you know, we, we bought our first four houses in North Carolina now. So we're, we're, we're getting going there. Matter of fact, I'm getting on a plane going there tomorrow morning. So that's, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. But, uh, but so yeah, we're going to, we're going to have it up and running in North and South Carolina too. Okay, great, great. So, I mean, we've talked about, you know, mobile homes on land, and I think it's a no-brainer because obviously, I mean, you know, without the underlying lot rent, I mean, it's almost just a basically single-family house. And when you look at a mobile home park inside the park, you have a little bit less control. There's a little bit more working against you here. Uh -huh. um, and this is where I think, you know, personally, I, you know, I'm not an expert, but this is where we've run into trouble. Um, can you kind of talk about the difference and some of the things to look out for when you come into these parks? Because some of them won't allow you to rent in there. Some of them won't allow you to do certain types of transactions. Um, I've, had, I've known a number of people come to me and they accidentally signed five-year leases and they didn't realize it. And so there, there's some big differences when you, when it comes to investing in a park. Well, huge differences because number you don't control the land. That's that's the part that you know when you buy the home on the land, you control the whole deal. You, you've got you've got total control. So you know back when I was doing it with you know I made sure I had a really really good relationship with the park manager. Okay, make sure that I had all that spelled out real well. What I can do, what I can't do, so I don't do something do, don't do something silly. Um, so. That's where people make mistakes. They just buy a home in a park. They don't really do their due diligence. And that park manager has got the right to tell you to move the home. Don't he, he can tell you what to do, what not to do. And you, there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. So you got to be really careful with that. Yeah. Because, man, I, I've heard some horror stories about people getting stuck in situations and they just couldn't get out of it. And I'm like. Absolutely. You know, so it's always do, do your due diligence. Um, do you market directly to these mobile home parks to find them? Or, I mean, you're primarily sticking just straight to the mobile homes outside on their own land though, right? Correct. Yeah. And like I say, right now I'm not, I'm not doing anything in mobile home parks. Okay. I, I mean, I know how to do it. I can teach it, but there's, it's more lucrative to buy the homes on the land. So that, that's what, that, that's what, that's what our business model is. That's what we focus on. Which is what I tell people all the time, guys. So if Glenn's not doing it. He's been doing this since 1982 you probably shouldn't be messing with them in the park, especially if you don't have the experience, because it can be, it can get you in a tough spot. And what you got to, you know, and see what's happened to mobile home parks, the rents have gone up substantially here too. Okay. Um, you know, back in the, in the late nineties, when I was doing this mobile home parks, where you could, you, you could get the, you could rent them for like a hundred, hundred, 150 a month. Now I'm hearing, you know, 400, 500 a month up in Denton. I'm hearing, you know, over 500 a month. So it's kind of, you know, you, you really got to buy the house right to make those kind of numbers work. And, and so you got to be careful of that. Well, and you, and you end up competing against the park itself a lot of times because, I mean, I mean, right. I had one property. We literally, I mean, it was like a black hole. I would drive all the leads. We we drive them through, you know, certain strategies to, to bring them to the property, look at, but they had to fill out an application and they go to the front office and they just disappear because they get sucked into the black that's, hole. Boy, that's that's the other thing too. Because see, a, a lot of these parks, there, and I forget the name of the company. There's a big company out of California that's bought a ton of the Texas parks, and yeah, they're designed. They, they got homes in the parks, and and they're they're selling their stuff, and and so yeah, it's yeah, you got to be careful. You got to be careful. 
I was their best. I was their best non-paid employee. I, I must have filled. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many properties I filled for that. It, it, we were in one of those yes communities. I mean, they're nice parks, but right, um, right. yeah, it was it was tough. And by the time we got it sold, we had to discount it quite a bit, and um, and that was one of our big problems. Um, now, insuring these mobile homes is a tricky thing. I think you have a way to do this, or are you connected with? I, I do. I'm a licensed. I, I I have an insurance agency. I'm a licensed insurance agent. So yeah, we're we're hooked up with 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 all the people that do the the mobile home insurance. And that, like I say, I, I don't actively solicit people's business, but if they want to call me to get mobile home insurance, we can sure we can sure help them with that. That's all we do. We don't do car insurance. We don't do any any of the other stuff. But uh, I primarily do it because I insure all of my own properties. That's why. And I have the license, so, you know, it works out good. Okay. And so, I mean, you talked about license right there, which is important because you have to have a mobile home dealer's license after you do what? How many transactions a year, right? So, you know, I'm I'm not I'm not really, boy, it used to be, it used to be over three, I believe. But, uh, but, uh, you know, a, a dealer, now you, you can buy what I'm doing. You don't need a dealer. You don't need a dealer's license. I'm buying real estate. I'm buying land. Yes, if you're doing the ones in the parks, or if you're, you know, you're you're moving them and you, and so forth, then you do need the you do you do need the TDHCA license for that. Okay, great. Thank you for clarifying that because that's something you know I've been confused on and always gets always scares me because they're like, well, you don't have a dealer's license, and so I guess if you're doing them on their own land, they're they're real property guys. It's it's not going to be a problem. Correct. That, that, that is totally correct. And, and uh, yeah, it, it's, it's more like to say when you're selling to other people, representing other people, then, then the dealer's license, like all mobile home dealerships have to ha- have to have the license, of course. So um, do you know, I mean, I know you're renting them, which is, which is interesting because I was, I was expecting you to say you're going to owner finance most of them, which is what most people are doing. Um, if you are owner financing, are there any specific rulings that you know of in Dodd-Frank that are specific for financing mobile homes separate than well, no, no, it's the same thing. Dodd, Dodd Frank is part of the reason I'm not I'm not doing it. You know, it's it's <laughs> and seriously because attorneys do, can't even tell you the the Dodd Frank law was was written so ambiguous to where attorneys don't know. So you, you know you got to be careful. Kind of the unwritten rule is you can do three a year, probably maybe five. If you do any more than that, you know you've got to you've got to hire a licensed uh, what is it a, a loan officer to yeah. you know to for that type of stuff, but. Um, so yeah, you 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 know, I, I would suggest someone if you're gonna do if you're gonna do seller financing, talk to some talk to an attorney, talk to someone who knows what they're doing, so you don't get yourself in trouble. But uh, the other thing I've learned through the years in seller financing, where people make a lot of mistakes, they don't get enough down payment, or they don't they don't qualify the tenant good enough, okay, or the the, the, the buyer good enough, okay, because and and when I was doing seller financing, I mean I would do it with the right person. With with a big down payment, I don't do. I never did small down payments. That doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, um, and try to shorten the term the best you can because you know over the longer the loan, the more you know people get divorced, they die, things happen. So um, you got to skew the odds. And in, in, one of the things when I had my Clayton franchise, we 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 would service all of our own loans. So I got to watch a portfolio, and you can kind of see, like I say, the people with bad credit. Guess what? Their 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 homes come back. Their yeah. properties come back. So you you gotta you gotta really qualify the tenants. Get the proper downs. Try to shorten the term where you can. You know you, you got to set the odds in your favor when you're doing seller financing. Yeah. So what's kind of a a, a good quality tenant as far as screening them? Because I know a lot of people here, mobile homes. I think trailer homes. They're thinking you know the worst of the worst. They're thinking. You know, you know, it's funny as well. And every every tenant that we and whether whether they're, if they were buying or or leasing, it doesn't matter. We're going to do the same search. We're going to do a credit check. We're going to do a criminal background check and eviction check. Okay, and and funny thing is, we're we're getting we're getting we're getting people in our homes now that, that make six figures. Okay, we're getting people that make six figures. A lot of a lot of them between the husband and wife they do. And so you know, we're getting good quality people. And and the the nice thing, the Dallas Fort Worth area again. Depending who you talk to, there's two to three thousand, two to three thousand people a week moving to the Dallas Fort Worth area. Wow. So, uh, had a guy here at the Fort Worth Club. That's where my office is, and he he, he, said, he said something was pretty funny. Old country guy. He goes, "Just ain't enough saddles for all the butts moving here." That's what, <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's a good way to say it. You know, just this the supply and the demand is really in our favor right now for 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 that type of thing. So you can screen tenants really, really, really tight right now. 
Okay, great, great. Now we talked about a lot of good stuff here today. Um, the last thing I want to kind of cover: Do you still you've owned a mobile home park or multiple, or do you still own one? Or I don't, I don't. No, sold it, sold it a while back. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't owned a mobile home park since I think the early '90s. That was that was the last time I had a mobile home park. So. <laughs> Is there a reason for that? <laughs> well, yes. Um, mobile home parks are very lucrative. They, I mean, there's a lot of people who have become millionaires from mobile home parks, okay? But it's a it's a different type of property management in a mobile home park. You're gonna, <laughs> you, uh, what what a guy told me one time, you're gonna deal with all God's children in a mobile home park. So you know, <laughs> you, you got to have the right manager at, at the location. You're there, there's there's a lot more stuff that goes on in a mobile home park than when you own a home on land. So I will put it that way. <laughs> Yeah, you have to you have to set some strict guidelines. One of the, one of our other yes. guests on here told me he he had a mobile home park, and on Fourth of July, um, he got called out because they were shooting guns in there, and he got out there and they had literally dug a jacuzzi just right into the dirt on the side of the mobile home and filled it up with like a, a water hose, and <laughs> and he was just like, I was like, is that pretty typical? See stuff like he's like, yes. <laughs> so so you, you're yeah, gonna get some home, unique people. All parks are a little bit different property management. Yes, I agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Glenn, I know, I know you're a busy guy and you got to go, but um, go ahead and give your contact information, guys. If you want to contact Glenn and you, you come across a mobile home here in the Carolinas or in DFW, or you just, um, you know, you want to learn a little bit more, I'm sure he's, he's, a, he's a great guy to teach you. Um, go ahead and, and we'll send this out with your, with your podcast and, and attach your information below so, can pe- so people can reach you later. Very good. Very good. Yeah. My phone number is 817- 966-1258. That's my cell. Feel free, I always tell people, feel free to call. You know, be happy to take the call. Um, my email address is Glenn at Stromberg Investment Group. That's S-T-R-O-M-B-E-R-G Investment Group dot com. Or excuse me, Stromberg Investment Group is my email. And then Stromberg Investment Group dot com is my website. So. OK, guys, you can find that underneath the video here. And also, guys, once again, if you're watching Investor Army Podcast YouTube channel, here's his book. Go check it out. Can you get this, I guess, probably anywhere on Amazon or? Well, it's not, it's not on Amazon. What, what, I'll, what I do is um, I, I normally I sell the book for $20 and, I, I, and, and we donate the money to charity. That's how we do it. Okay. And one other thing, and I, and I, and I, I, forgot, to t- I forgot to tell you this, or, may, or maybe you, we were at the same mastermind group in Indiana, but I'm going to be, I'm going to be the, the, uh, I'm going to run the chapter for Veterans Path Up here, the nonprofit for Veterans Path Up to help, to help veterans find, to, to get into homes. And so I'm really, I'm really excited about that. It's a great cause. And that's who the money will be donated to if, if they buy a book. So. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So we just, um, so as you know, on our Investor Army YouTube channel, guys, uh, literally, I think we're at like 990 some subscribers a day. And when we break a thousand, um, we are picking a charity and that's who we donated. So we donated a thousand dollars to Veterans Path Up as well um, for a thousand subscribers on the YouTube channel. And guys, I just want to point out that, um, you know, I don't, I don't say it's quite often, but Glenn's a great guy because the first time I met him, you know, he didn't know me. He didn't know I could have been just some random person in the hotel or whatever. It was at uh, David's event, the Freedom Founders event. And, you know, he, you know, he was a great guy and just introduced himself and gave me a bunch of respect. And not everybody does that in this business when they become successful. And so there's a lot of ego and a lot of uh, <laughs> different types of personalities. So, you know, I always remember that um, when we met you the first time. Um, guys, get his book. Check out Better's Path Up. Check out his information online. If you find a mobile home, he's the man to go to. Guys, see you on the next episode.